What are polynomials? That's the question we'll be answering in today's Wrath of Math lesson. So here for our observation is a polynomial called P. In my experience, when we start learning about polynomials, we actually don't give them names that often, but it is something that's useful sometimes that we will use, so I figured I'd include it here. And we could say that our polynomial P is a polynomial in one variable, because of course it has only one variable, being x. A polynomial is an expression made up of the sum of terms. All those purple things I underlined are the terms of our polynomial P. And the terms of a polynomial are each made up of two or three things, depending on how you like to think about it. Firstly, the terms have coefficients. The coefficients of a polynomial are real numbers that are multiplied by the variables of the polynomial. And just to emphasize that again, the coefficients have to be real numbers. Here in the first term, it might appear we have no coefficient. Of course, the coefficient is just 1, but since multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, we just choose not to write it. Another thing of interest is in this term, we have a negative coefficient, negative 5. So if we wanted to, instead of writing plus this term, we could write minus this term and just get rid of that negative. This is often how you will see this sort of thing written, but I chose to write it as addition just to keep everything uniform for this example. Alright, so a polynomial is an expression made up of the addition of terms, and the terms have coefficients, which are real numbers being multiplied by the variables. Then, of course, we also have the variables of the polynomial. It's pretty common for a polynomial to have only one variable, like our polynomial p. These sorts of polynomials are really useful for modeling all sorts of different situations, but polynomials can also have multiple variables, and you might see such polynomials sometime. Here's an example of what a polynomial with multiple variables might look like. Also, here in the last term, it might look like we have no variable, but we could write this as x to the power of 0. But anything to the power of 0 is just 1. Again, multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, so we just don't bother writing that. Lastly, the variables in the terms of the polynomial all have an exponent, or a power. This one here is being raised to the power of 1. And again, this one in the last term was being raised to a power of 0. The exponents, or the powers, of the variables in a polynomial have to be non-negative integers. So they can be numbers like 0, 1, 2, and so on. But if a variable has a exponent of something like 1 half or any negative exponent, then it is not part of a polynomial. So this might look like a polynomial, but don't be fooled, it's no such thing because of that negative exponent. The greatest exponent present in a polynomial is called the degree of the polynomial. In this case, our greatest exponent is the exponent of 4, so this is a fourth degree polynomial. One other restriction for an expression to be a polynomial is that it must have a finite number of terms. So it can't just keep going on and on and still be a polynomial. But that is really the basic gist of it, folks. A polynomial is an expression made up of the sum of terms. Each term has a coefficient. The coefficients are real numbers getting multiplied by the variables. A polynomial can have 0, 1, 2, or even more variables. And each variable is being raised to the power of some exponent, and the exponents have to be non-negative integers, like 0, 1, 2, and so on. And the greatest exponent present in a polynomial is the degree of the polynomial. So something like this, this is a rather boring degree 0 polynomial, because the greatest exponent present is 0. Here is a slightly more interesting degree 1 polynomial, which you might recognize as a linear function. Here is an example of a degree 2 polynomial, which is a quadratic function. 
But ooh, there's something unsettling about this, and that's that this polynomial has not been written in standard form. To write a polynomial in standard form, we want to put the term with the greatest exponent first, and then the term with the next greatest exponent, and so on all the way down to the term with the smallest exponent. So rewriting this in standard form, we would put the x squared term first, then the x to the power of one term, then the x to the power of zero term. And again, this is called the standard form of the polynomial. If a polynomial is written in standard form, the first term is called the leading term. And the coefficient of the leading term is called, you guessed it, the leading coefficient. And before we go, let me just jot down a couple more examples of polynomials. So there are a few more examples of polynomials. If you want to have some fun, leave me some examples of polynomials in the comments. Or you could even leave some examples of things that look like polynomials, but are not polynomials. And that should just about do it. So I hope this video helped you understand what polynomials are, as well as some of the basic language we use to describe them and to talk about them. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. I'm not mad.